Andrew, Democratic caller, Middletown, New Jersey. Uh, yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Andrew. First of all, uh, good morning, Mr. Rickman. Good morning. Uh, yes. Uh, the one thing I want to point out is that nobody in Washington and nobody in the mainstream media is focusing on a theft that was put on the American people years ago when Congress and the Reagan White House decided to move the Social Security Trust Fund, which was an off-budgeted item. It was never meant to be part of the Treasury. And they did this, uh, Richard Dorman and his other Confederates, did this to cover up the huge amount of money Reagan was spending on defense, when, which went down a rat hole. And now, because it's part of the Treasury, well, now we run deficits. Well, let's look at who the real culprits were. It is not the people who contributed into this trust fund. It is the people that we elected that stole the money from the seniors and all the people that paid into this for generations. My own father died at 57. He never collected it. I knew other people who died before they could collect it. So let's put the truth out here. And as far as Medicare goes, let's go after the hospitals and the doctors that are doing unnecessary tests and stealing the money from the American people. Thank you. All right, Max Richman, let's take his last point about doctors. Well, I think that if you, somebody uh, earlier asked about reforming Medicare. I think we'd go a long ways towards saving money and reforming the program in, in the right way if uh, payment physician reimbursement were based more on quality and outcomes, not on the volume, which I think the caller was talking about. And that's where you end up having a lot of uh, expenses for unnecessary uh, tests, possibly procedures, and the reimbursement, if, it, if, the, uh, if, the chain, if a change took place and it corresponded to outcomes and, and uh, rather than just volume, I think we'd save some money. I think he, makes, he made a couple of good points. Rex, the Republican in Dayton, Ohio. Yes, good morning. Um, I would like to just say uh, one thing real quick on the earlier caller in regards to uh, she was suggesting we take a lot of uh, money from Medicaid. And uh, the gentleman there was saying that, you know, 60-odd percent of people on Medicaid are not the poor. I would have to argue with that because Medicaid has a, a limit of income. So, uh, for instance, where I'm at here, I can't own a vehicle worth so much. In fact, I can't own anything beyond a certain worth because if I do, then I'm not eligible for Medicaid. And let me tell you, I'm in a rental property that hasn't been worked on for 70 years, and, and uh, you know, I scrape the bottom of the barrel every day of life. Also, in regards to Medicare, I have Medicare A, B, and D. My medicine averages over $7,000 a month. How in the world am I going to – this is life-saving medication. How in the world – Am I going to be able to survive this uh, with these giant cuts? All right, Rex, Max Richman. Uh, maybe I, I wasn't clear on my explanation of, Medi of uh, who is covered by Medicaid. Yes, it's, uh, it is welfare. It's income-based. My point was uh, seniors and the disabled, they become poor when they're in nursing homes. It's not that they, get, uh, they receive Medi Medicaid benefits while they still have uh, assets, but they spend down, they have no alternative, they, ha they have spent their, their money, their resources for their long-term care, and then they rely, when they are poor, on Medicaid. That's why it's important to seniors, to the disabled, uh, to maintain uh, a Medicaid program that is viable. Los Angeles, Tom, independent caller. Yeah, good morning. Um, uh, Mr. Richard, I'd like to find out, um, I'm an independent, sort of where you're coming from. What legislators did you work for, number one? Two, um, where did your group get its funding? And then three, um, I paid into Social Security since 1955. I paid into Medicare since it existed. I've never used Medicare situation I have is this. I uh, have a increase in cost of uh, everything. Uh, my income without um, 
Medicare is $1,300 a month. With Medicare, it's under $1,200 a month. I'm, I've dropped Medicare. I've never used it. I've paid for it. Um, and I'm just sort of really in a rock and a hard place. I know there are a lot of other programs that don't deal directly with uh, with funding, and I know I've paid for many, many years, and I like used to discern. So if you would be kind enough to answer my questions, I would surely appreciate it. And I, I, uh, I, I'm the choice in between on keeping Social Security as it is because my kids are paying it, and it looks, looks like they'll never be able to get, uh, to get it. All right, Tom. Well, uh, just quickly, uh, you asked uh, uh, the members of Congress I work for, uh, Congressman uh, Sidney Yates uh, of Illinois, who's uh, passed away. Uh, Senator Jim Aberesk uh, from South Dakota uh, and uh, Senator John Melcher of Montana. Both of those senators uh, have uh, retired. As far as the funding of the National Committee, uh, we are supported by our members. All of that money that I mentioned that we, we spent on this vigorous campaign was, uh, was out of the contributions of our members. The average contribution is uh, uh, the membership contribution is $12 a year. And we don't receive any uh, government money, we don't receive any foundation money, any corporate money. Uh, and that's good for us because we represent our members. We don't even have a, uh, the color of, uh, of a conflict. We're true to our members and we don't have any, any conflicting interests that we have to explain. Max Richmond is the president and CEO of the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. The website is ncpssm.org. Houston, Texas. Wayne, Democratic caller. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to talk about the excesses of capitalism. Uh, the band U2 went on tour last year and made $800 million, you know, in one year. And uh, the Republicans are trying to take – you know, leave those guys alone. Say, keep all your money. They don't want to go put take money from them and give it to research, medical research, or teachers, or you know, any of the social programs that they call socialism. But you know, uh, this it, it's excess. You can't have excessive communism. You can't have excessive capitalism. You've got to be in the middle, and that's where Roosevelt was when he instituted all these problems. Thanks. Any thoughts, Max Richmond? Well, I I think it's. Uh, I think that the, that the message that uh, resonated in the Congress over the last three months, and uh, uh, particularly the members of the Super Committee, really dealt with what the caller just talked about, fairness. Th this whole discussion was about fairness uh, that the Super Committee uh, was engaged in. Is it fair to, uh, to cut important, vital benefits for people who are counting on them just to survive and protect uh, the wealthiest in our country. It's not fair. And I think that whole idea of fairness, look at Occupy Wall Street and on uh, the various protests around the country. I think that people uh, in this country are getting to the point where they expect uh, their representatives to treat the American people, all of us, uh, with fairness. So he, I think he raises a very good point. Ed's next in Chino, California, an independent caller. Hi. Um, let me calm down for a second. Uh, I tend to be very <laughs> Ross Perotian in my politics. I believe in truth, facts, results, and I want to I want to uh, discuss the uh, the myth or the outright lie about Social Security. Am I the only one that watches the Discovery Channel and the Learning Channel? I watched a show maybe more than five years, less than ten years ago, and it was about longevity, and it showed that uh, on a graph. Uh, the deaths started in their 40s, spiked uh, somewhere around the 65, 67, then dramatically dropped, and then trickled along into the 70s. And the guy ended the show by saying, um, the people living into the 70s is more anecdotal than actual truth. And I thought about that. I thought about that. And I go, that's right. All of my relatives died in, died in their 60s. Most of the people I know had died in their 60s. I, I can count all the people who live who, that are in their 70s on one hand. Um, so I want to so I want to discuss what you know this this I, I want to you to discuss this myth or this lie about people living um, 
into the, you know we're living longer because uh, it, when you look at the actual numbers and ex any, more, any, any mortician, I don't think that's that's a true statement. I think okay, let's take that point. Well, first of all, I can assure you, you are not the only one watching the Discovery or the Learning Channel because I watch it, so I know you're not alone in that regard. Uh, there are so many myths about Social Security. Uh, myths that there's no money there, that it's bankrupt, that it's broke, all myths. Uh, there is uh, some truth to the fact that um, uh, our lifespan for Americans has increased uh, since the Social Security program was enacted. That's a good thing. I'm glad, personally, it's a good thing. You may be as well at some point, which we probably are now. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, the important thing is to, uh, when looking at the age for receiving benefits, is how long can people work? The, uh, the Social Security uh, age for receiving benefits was raised back in the early 80s. It was phased in gradually. I'll be 66 before I get benefits. Uh, at, at in another few years, the, the age for everyone will be 67. But how much longer can people work? You know, we can maybe do this for a long time, I hope so, but uh, working in, a, in, a, in a, a packing house in the Midwest or in an in a, uh, auto plant, you can't work in, for, for, for much longer than that. And the important thing is, uh, I think, in looking at the age is, well, two things. One is, uh, we could solve Social Security by <coughs> raising the age for retirement to 90. That wouldn't make any sense, and it wouldn't make sense to raise it beyond what it is now. The other thing, the man mentioned that most of the people he knows didn't live into their 70s, maybe didn't qualify for Social Security. This is social insurance. That's another uh, a myth about the program, that it's an investment program. It's, to, it's you know, you see what you get out based on what you put in. That's not the point. FICA is Federal Insurance Contribution Act. It's insurance for for families. And 38%, uh, I think almost 38% of Social Security benefits go to non-retired workers. So uh, these people that the caller mentioned, they were eligible for disability benefits through Social Security, through survivor for survivor benefits. If you are 27 years old and a worker with a spouse and two children, you have right now almost half a million dollars in life and disability insurance if something bad happens, if you if you die or become disabled, a lot of younger people don't know that and don't appreciate it until something bad does happen. So it's it's another an, another myth that needs to be dispelled about Social Security. It's not an investment plan. That's why we opposed privatization so strongly a few years ago and continue to do so. It's an insurance plan. Well, I want to get your thoughts on Newt Gingrich's uh, recent comments about Social Security and his proposal for it in an interview that he gave to the uh, New Hampshire Union leader before Thanksgiving. Take a look. That everybody who wants to, starting with the young, but anybody who wanted to, could, ch could choose a personal Social Security savings account. Uh, you would build it up over your working lifetime. So if you want to work part-time at 14 or 16, you put in, and, and basically the easiest model, which was the Ryan Sununu model, is you're allowed to put your half of the Social Security tax into your own savings account. Mm -hmm. The other half goes to sustain the current system. And when you look at that, uh, it turns out that half the amount you currently pay for Social Security built up over your working lifetime comes two to three times as much money. Next, Richmond. Well, if, if you're for destroying Social Security, uh, I'd say vote, vote for uh, Speaker Gingrich. That's what his plan would do. You take that amount of money out of the program, there will be a, 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 a talk about shortfalls. You're going to uh, dramatically affect the money that's there for the future. And he, he's, he misses the point that I just I tried to make. This program is insurance. It's not about what you get when you retire in, in return. It's about insurance for your families, for your children, uh, throughout your life. And to focus just on a return and forget about the social insurance nature of the program or dismiss it, as Speaker Gingrich seems to do, is a huge mistake. Galen, in a Republican in only Illinois. Yes, I just got a comment and then a question. I've never heard the news media or anybody ask the congressmen or senators how much it costs them 
cost us to keep them up there, and are they going to cut some of our entitlements? Let us know what their entitlements are. Thank you. Well, I, I don't know all of the benefits that members of Congress receive. I, knew, I know that they are part of the Social Security program. Uh, that, that has been the case, was not always the case, but that happened some years ago. Uh, they pay into it just like everybody else. They qualify for benefits just like everybody else. Like uh, uh, some workers, they have, they have pensions. A lot, of us, a lot of Americans don't have uh, the kinds of pensions we used to have and rely more and more on Social Security. Last phone call here for you. Chris, a Democrat in Hollywood, California. Uh, good morning. Why don't they have a value-added tax? It, because that would solve everything. Max Richmond. I, I, I couldn't comment on that. I, I, don't, I don't know if a value-added tax would solve everything. I wish something would solve everything, <laughs> but uh, I really can't comment on that. Max Richmond, President and CEO of the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. Thank you for talking to our viewers. Appreciate Thank you your so time. much for inviting me.